Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com. Now the principles of design are simply visual tools that help you structure your images. But it's possible that you've heard of today's principles, rhythm and repetition, in terms of music. But they've actually got visual meanings as well. We'll start off with the most basic of the two, which is repetition. And using repeated elements in an illustration is pleasing to the viewer. So in this example, See how this scene is filled with rocks and rubble? Now it can be hard to explain this in concrete terms, but having a bunch of instances of a similar looking rock spread throughout this scene is comforting. It anchors it in place. It gives it a certain kind of continuity. In, in one sense, it's actually an element of visual shorthand. Because when you see this up-close rock here in the foreground, you learn a lot about it. It's pretty detailed. But then if I put a bunch more rocks that are similar in shape, far away in the background, they've got considerably less detail, but your brain fills in the gaps. Because your brain understands that those are the same object at different distances from the viewer. So not only have I saved myself time with this, but it's also a way to be more economic with my mark making. So here the character in the foreground stands out better because the background is relatively less detailed but it still seems detailed because of the way your brain fills in the gaps. But repetition doesn't need to be quite so literal. Repetition can be used in terms of shape, regardless of subject matter. So if you look at this second example here, the field of rocks and the character are slightly different. You'll notice that the peaks are a bit sharper. Now look at the armor on this orc. It mirrors the same shape as the rocks. So in this way, I'm using shape repetition, even though the objects are totally different. In one case, it's armor, and in the other one, it's a background object. So this adds continuity through repetition. Subconsciously, this character fits with the landscape really well. And your viewer might not even realize why. They just seem to go together. And remember, this is not limited to large-scale objects. You can do small interior objects. So if you take a look at this orc, you can see I've used the same shape throughout his armor at all different scales. There's big versions and small versions. This small scale repetition is a great way to create a pleasing design. The second principle I want to talk about today is called rhythm. And rhythm is actually a specific variety of repetition. So if I had a scene with a bunch of rocks and they were all equally spaced, it would look pretty odd, pretty mechanical. Now, if I took those same rocks and rearranged them, I'd have a very different mood. Now, all the same objects are here, they're just arranged differently. But you can see that it makes a big impact. So if you were creating a natural scene, maybe a landscape or a forest, you'd want to have more variety in the placement and the scale of the objects. Also, you'd probably want to overlap them in the same way that we talked about in previous videos. So unlike some of the aspects of drawing, or even the use of rhythm in music, this is not an exact science. It's hard to quantify. And honestly, it's likely that you're already utilizing rhythm and repetition without even realizing it. Because many artists have a intuitive ability to arrange things nicely. Whether it's objects in their house or objects inside of a drawing, we just have a natural sense of how to space things carefully. So when you make your next illustration, think a while about the way that you're repeating objects intentionally, repeating shapes. And while you're at it, make sure that repetition is rhythmic. Add some variety. Have fun, guys, and thanks for watching.